Hey, I'm Alec, and today I'm going to show you how to calibrate your 3D printer's extruder. <music> 3D printers work by using stepper motors to make precise movements along each axis. Now, out of the box, most 3D printers are well calibrated, but if you notice you have over extrusion or under extrusion, then you may want to calibrate your extruder because even if you have your nozzle width at the right size and the line width and speeds and all that's correct and you're getting funky prints, then your E-steps or extruder steps for the motor may be wrong. So let's look into what exactly you need to do depending on a Bowden setup or a direct drive 3D printer. Step one, identify your 3D printer's extruder setup. So there's two main families for extruders. There's Bowden and direct drive. And the difference is Bowden has the motor mounted to the frame and direct drive has the motor mounted to the print head. Once you've figured out which one you have, proceed to the next step. Step two, set up for calibration. With the Bowden style printer, in order to set it up, what you need to do is remove the Bowden tube from the hot end and use a set of flush cutters to trim the filament flush with the end of the tube. For direct drive printers, it's a little different. You're gonna need calipers and a marker. Now what you're gonna need to do is take the calipers, set it to 120 millimeters and pick an arbitrary point above the extruder gear of the direct drive printer. From there, mark 120 millimeters and you're set for the next step. Step three, testing and calibration. Once you connect your printer to matter control, you're gonna to want to extrude 100 millimeters of filament. Now, depending on the firmware, your printer may not allow you to extrude unless it's up to temperature. So, heat it up, and once it's done, you're good to go. For Bowden style extruders, what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure how much filament came out at the end of the tube. It's 95 millimeters, you're under extruding. It's 105 millimeters, you're over extruding. So do this a couple times and take a, an average of how much is coming out before we get to the next step. For a direct drive printer, you're going to measure the difference between 120 and how much filament is left. If it's 25 millimeters, then you're under extruding. If it's 15, you're over extruding because really there should be 20 millimeters of filament left. Do the same thing, take an average and write that down. Step four changing the EEPROM settings. So EEPROM is the set of firmware settings directly dictating how your printer moves and behaves. Now with E-steps or extruder steps, these are the ones you're gonna to wanna to change. And if your printer only has one tool head, really easy to figure it out. For some printers, they may call the first print head extruder zero, for others, they may call it extruder one. Once you figured out which one is which, start calibrating. Using the numbers that you found when extruding 100 millimeters and the E-steps that you see currently, here's the formula you want to use in order to calibrate your printer. Take this new value and enter it into the EEPROM settings, save it, and we're going to do it again. Step 5. Repeat your calibration. So like a pendulum, you may find that you're a little too high, a little too low, a little too high until you end up right back at the center and have a perfect 100 millimeter extrusion. So it may take a couple tries to get exactly there, but it's a pretty easy calibration process. Step six, repeat as necessary for different materials. Some materials like flexibles take a lot more pressure in order to extrude as much. So most people just turn up the flow rate, but what you can do is you can actually test the E-steps for that specific filament. So let's say that NinjaFlex is extruding only 50 millimeters when you say 100. Well, that means that you know that you just need to do a flow rate of 200% when you're using flexibles. So you can test this for different materials, and most should stay around the first number you found, like ABS and PETG will behave very similarly to PLA, but this is just a calibration you could do for completeness and not necessarily something you should do for every material you have. And that's it. Now you should have a perfectly calibrated machine. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below. I'm Alex from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all the latest videos. And don't forget, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.